Hey everyone, Liam here. Welcome to this week's video, how to paint Space Wharves. We're looking for a good tabletop level without using an airbrush as always. If you've got any feedback, any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you do want to support the channel, please check out my Patreon for more in-depth advanced video tutorials, as well as options for one-to-one -one tuition. If you do want anything painted, feel free to get in contact with me for commissions. And as always, I hope this video is helpful. If it is, hit that like button. Feel free to hit the subscribe button as well. <laughs> Here we go. So first of all, the model is base coated over a gray primer with Games Workshop Dark Reaper layer paint. This is a really good dark gray with a nice blue tint to it, but it's not too overpowering. The next step that we're gonna do, we're gonna pick out the areas of the model that we want to highlight. Now, how you do this is entirely up to you. For me, I break it down into very simple shapes, whether the armor section is a cylinder or a sphere or a cube, and then I highlight accordingly. So in this case, the color that we're using is Vallejo model color gray blue. I like Vallejo model color because it's quite an opaque paint and it means that this stage we can do very quickly. If you're using GW paints, then that's absolutely fine. Any paint brand is fine. It's not gonna make any difference whatsoever. Whatever paints work for you is fine. This is just effectively a nice pale blue gray. And the idea is I'm putting very opaque marks down, so very strong marks, and I'm just covering the areas I want to be brighter. And the idea of this is, is we're roughly marking in how we want our light to work, so how we want our highlights to look. And then we can blend it all together later on. But the idea is we just get a nice quick sketch so we know what this is gonna look like at the end and whether we're gonna be happy with it or not. So the next step is we're gonna do exactly the same thing. This time we're gonna use Vallejo Pale Gray Blue. This is just a fairly bright gray with a tiny hint of blue in it again. And the idea is we're gonna go over exactly what we've, the areas that we've just done, but we're going to do a smaller mark. So these marks are going to be within those um, gray blue areas that we've already painted. And this is going to be our brightest point on this model. So choose where you want it to go and then just slap it on and then what will happen is, is at the end of it we'll know very clearly whether our highlights are going to look nice or not or whether we've gone too bright or too or not bright enough. So ignore the change here, I've changed the background colour of the video feed, I think it looks better but I'll let you make your mind up. So the only difference here is from the previous clip is I've base coated most of the model details are black again and that left shoulder pad for the marine I've base coated that white because we're eventually going to do that yellow so that's the only difference from the previous stage what we're going to start doing now because I'm happy with my highlight areas we're going to start refining them we're going to start blending this together so to blend this together what we're going to do is paint lots of tiny little marks this is similar to what we've done in the past now the color that we use depends entirely what we're trying to blend. So if we're trying to blend that dark shadow color, which was the GW Dark Reaper and the Vallejo model color gray blue, then we would use either of those colors to blend this together. So you pick one of them, put it on your paintbrush. You want to thin it down to probably three parts water to one part paint as an estimate. But the idea is what you want is you want a paint that is fairly transparent. So when you put your brush down, it doesn't entirely cover the previous layers of paint that you've got on the model. And when you're doing these, you're going to do lots of tiny little marks like scratches, dots, and that sort of stuff. And ideally, you want them to cover both of the paints that you've got on the model. So let's say, for example, you've got the Reaper, the Dark Reaper Grey, and then you've got the Vallejo Blue, the Grey Blue right next to each other. Your brush mark generally you're going to try and get both of, of those paints on the model so you're going to cover the dark and you're going to cover the light and because your paint's transparent what that's going to do is it's going to brighten up your dark color and it's going to light um and it's going to darken down your light color and it eventually brings those two colors together and that's how you build up your transitions sorry that's how you soften your transitions you do it with lots of little marks and then eventually it will come together it's also the same with the brighter colors. So with the Vallejo model color gray blue and the Vallejo model color pale gray blue, where those two colors meet, you would do lots of little marks with one of those paints and that will adjust 
that transition and it will give you that softer transition which is what we're aiming for now what i would potentially say to you better to go too thin with your paint because if you go too thin it's not going to have too much of an impact but if you go too thick your mark is going to be very strong and you're going to end up having to hide that mark so although i'm telling you to use say three parts water to one part paint work it out for yourself remember a huge part of painting and being a better painter is understanding and managing your paint consistency and being able to find that sweet pot spot for every single paint and that is a skill that as painters we really need to learn and it's incredibly important so experiment with your paint consistency don't take my word as gospel because every single paint behaves differently it doesn't matter whether it's just a different pot a different color a different brand all of them behave differently there is no perfect paint consistency when it comes to doing this now for me i'm using the tip of my brush i quite like doing that you can use the side of your brush if you want and that will give you much larger brush marks but i tend to find that it will take much longer to transition those colors but again experiment is what works for you the key here is the thin paint consistency i do appreciate this is a little bit of a different way of painting than what you generally see on youtube if you are struggling with it or if you have got more questions yes you can check out my patreon that's fine but also i do stream on twitch as well so if you want more clarification if you want something if you want some questions answered um then feel free to check out the stream like feel free to jump on and i'll try and help and explain as much as possible So you can see things have changed a little bit. I haven't done any more work on the grey armour from what was on there previously, but I have rebase coated all the black on the shoulder pads and the details, and I've also painted the shoulder pad yellow with Games Workshop Urail Yellow over that white base coat. The reason why I've done that at this stage is because I want to see what it looks like with all the painted, with all the details painted, because although it hasn't got to be the right colours, just having those details in black will give us a good idea of what this grey armour is really going to look like. We need context and you'll be surprised how much of a difference that makes. So I would recommend it when you're at the point where you may be halfway through, definitely just paint in the details of everything around that armour and you'll see exactly what I mean. It really does make a huge difference. But with the grey armour now, you can see that basically what I've done is I've started to edge highlight that grey armour. The idea here is still need a little bit of refinement on it, but we need to make this grey armour readable. We need to give it shape. We need to give it definition. So what we're going to do is we're going to edge highlight all of the areas of the armour that we need to make it pop out. And any of the recesses that we might have lost where we've been a bit messy with our paint, we're going to go back with a, a dark reaper and we're going to paint into those recesses to redefine them. Remember, readability is incredibly important when we're painting at this scale. And the thing with Space Marines is, although like, I'm not personally a fan of too many edge highlights, especially for gaming pieces, 
does make a huge difference from it when you look at it from afar because we can struggle to tell what shapes actually are where they start and where they finish so edge highlights are really important you can also see I'm just placing that highlight on the helmet I'm going for a nice shine spot there not too shiny but the idea here is is that's where our light is going to hit if we break that helmet down into a very basic shape it's effectively a sphere so we're having a nice circular highlight on it I'm painting this with dots specifically very careful dots with very thin paint this is probably four or five parts water to one part paint removing the majority of the paint off of the brush and then making tiny little marks to build up that very fast transition and this just goes to make it pop we want that really nice we want that nice bright highlight on the top of the head there and then we could just continue with framing the rest of the miniature So next up, we're gonna make the yellow shoulder pad actually look nice. For this, we're gonna grab an orange. In my case, I use, use the Vallejo model color of uh, orange red. Thin this paint down quite heavily to say four or five parts water to one part paint. And then I'm gonna push it towards the recesses on the shoulder pad. And I'm gonna make a point of going over all of the yellow. This yellow is really quite nasty. I don't particularly like GW Rail yellow, but when we're going over it with this orange, it warms it up and it gives it some life which makes a huge huge difference and the idea is we just want to get some kind of variation so towards the edges towards the bottom we're just making it a little bit more darker a little bit more interesting this particular process is exactly the same as how I did the Imperial Fist so if you want more information on how I painted the yellow on this check out the tutorial on the Imperial Fist and I'll link it at the end of this video for you so this is where I start adding edge highlights. You're going to see the difference here. As soon as we start putting these edge highlights in, it makes it really pop, makes everything really quite readable. 
makes a huge difference to the result on this armor. You can also see the shoulder trim or the shoulder pads has changed. The reason for that is that I realized that they're the same color as the actual armor. We're supposed to be painting them space walls, the, the same space walls gray as the rest of the armor. It's just me being daft. So we're going to paint those as well. And that'll make a huge difference to the way this looks as well. The shoulder pads are incredibly important. They give us a really good opportunity to put a really bright spot towards the head and to get some really nice sharp lines on the trim. This is the benefit of painting Space Marines. We've got very, very hard lines that make things quite striking. So I'm not going to go over most of the details on this because the details are very painted very simply. All of the silver, all of the, the bags were just base coated with effectively a lead belcher equivalent. I've base coated it with like a like a, a leather brown colour and then I'm putting a brown wash over them. And I'm not doing any more than that. The details don't need to be overly icky, um, overly great because ultimately everyone's going to be looking at the armour. So with the chainsaw though. First thing that I do is I paint half the chainsaw black, the other half a grey, and then while both these paints are wet, I'm moving that brush side to side and I'm pulling and pushing these two paints together. Now, I this these paints are not thinned down, they've got a slight, slight amount of water into them just to break the surface tension on the paint itself, but we're effectively wet blending, we want those paints to be wet on the model. If the paints are too wet, they're, they're, they're just going to run together like water, so we need some thickness to them. There's, if if you want to know more about wet blending, there is more. There is a more in-depth video on my Patreon, so feel free to check it out. I don't currently have anything on YouTube for that, so I apologise, but you can see the process on screen for how I've done it. It's just a very quick transition, and the reason why I've done that is because we're going to put a pattern over it anyway, so it's not 
overly important. So next up is the freehand design. Now, we're going to be doing this in yellow. So if we put yellow over black, first of all, the coverage is going to be a nightmare. If we put it over gray, it's going to go very green. So we're asking for trouble. So I'm going to get a pure white paint. In this case, I'm using Vallejo model color. I quite like it because it's a very opaque paint. It means that I don't have to put a huge amount of marks on. So I start off with painting diagonal lines going across the chain blade, the chain sword at roughly the same distances apart. And then I do the alternative side of the triangle, the same angle as the previous one. Now, as you can see, there's huge gaps between them. The reason for this is we're going to gradually make them larger until the triangles meet. And then the reason why we gradually make them larger is because it helps with symmetry. Because if one of them is too far to the left or too far to the right, it means you can always make an adjustment on the other side of the triangle. This helps quite a lot when it comes to trying to get a mildly symmetrical pattern. The other thing that I want you to point out, want you to think about is your the way you're holding this model and the way you're holding your brush. When you're trying to do details like this, you want to make sure that your the section that you are painting, whatever your paint is on the inside of your hand. The reason why I say that is because when you hold your paintbrush, if your, your line that you're painting is on the right hand side of your, is on the outside of your hands, then what happens is, is you're actually blocking the view of what you're seeing. So you need to make sure that your, the outside of your line is on the inside of your hand. Um, give it a go and you'll see exactly what I mean. You should have a very clear view of what you're painting. So we put the triangles in. The lines are looking a, bit, a little bit messy here. That's absolutely fine because this is where you go, get to go back with the black. In my case, I just mixed up a grey. It wasn't really a big deal. And you get to fix those lines. So the way you're going to do this, think about when you're using your brush. Make sure you're always pulling your brush towards your body. If you've got shaky hands like I do. Try and do faster brush strokes. If you do a quicker brush stroke, your, your hand has less chance to, to shake. And also exhale as you do your brush stroke. It will steady your hand and it will take your mind off of what you're trying to do. So unless you've got some kind of actual medical issue for shaky hands, you can mitigate it quite a lot just by controlling your breathing. So next up is really straightforward. Same as the shoulder pad. GW URL yellow, see how horrible it looks. We're going to paint over these triangles with that URL yellow so we get a nice solid base coat. And then we're going to get that fiery orange again, that red orange from Vallejo model color. We're going to glaze it over these triangles towards the base of the power blade, the chain blade, sorry. And then this basically gives us our nice um, transition to that shadowed yellow. And that's pretty much how you paint the chainsaw.
So that's the space wall finished. The rest of the model is a simple one color and a brown wash. The silver is scale 75 thrash metal, which is equivalent to say a GW lead belcher. The chest eagle is a gold color, um, like Balthazar gold. The skulls are like a bone white color and the leather pouches are just like a leather brown. And then all of those have got a Agrax Earthshade wash over the top. <clears throat> I haven't done any highlights. I haven't done anything like that. You can see that I've also freehanded the Space Wolf symbol on the shoulder pad. If you want me to show you how I did that, I can. But by all means, like, let me know in the comments if you want me to see, if you want me to do a freehand video. Not really sure how relevant it's going to be. But yeah, the main thing that is on this video is you can see how I painted the armor, how I painted the chainsword and that shoulder pad. Everything else is not painted very well. It's a base coat and a wash. But all that we end up looking at is the armor color because it's the most important thing there. And then the chainsword and the shoulder pad because it's yellow, it stands out. Those are what's important. Those are what we take the time on. The rest of it doesn't really matter because no one's gonna, no one's really gonna bother looking. So as always, I hope this is helpful. If you've got any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Please like and subscribe to the channel and that'll keep us going and we can put more videos out. Thanks very much.